Welcome again to another video. This is Wisdom Hunter, and this is a series of videos for solo gaming for D&D RPG on Roll20. Today's topic is about corruption of the PCs. This is when the PCs are traveling through evil infested areas or touching evil infesting things. I've even had a PC have contact with a mad person in a bar or a tavern. And that particular PC ended up going mad and stealing from the other party members and it turned out to a big scene in the end when they were trying to figure out who was stealing the spell focus of a certain spellcaster. Corruption is a very interesting part of a story and D&D does not really bring it in. Most DMs do not use mechanics for any type of corruption. I do. I think it's a wonderful aspect of the story to realize how evil influences can seep into our personality and change us. So I'm going to show you how to incorporate these things into your solo gaming. And of course, if you want to use any of these things that I'm showing you in play with other people, no problem. You just use it for other people. But if you're doing solo playing, this is a really interesting thing to get into the psychology of a game. So let me show you some macros that I use and take you into this mechanic for corruption. Okay, so here we are. I'm showing you some of the macros that I use. First one is going to be a shadow check. You'll see this on the left. And it's basically going to say shadow creeping in. Willpower beats and then it give a DC. And then you either beat this DC or you're going to get a certain number of shadow points. And the shadow points are determined by the severity of your contact with evil influences, which I call shadow in the games. And once you've accumulated enough shadow points without healing them, you start developing corruption levels. And corruption levels will actually change your personality, make you do certain crazy things. And you'll see this macro for mild corruption there. And if you continue to be corrupted with more and more shadow points, you'll become moderately corrupted. And you'll see that macro down below. Now, this mild corruption table actually uses a rollable table, which you'll see part of it over to the right there. That's a mild corruption rollable table. And you'll see a couple of things in there that would happen to the PC. And it's randomly chosen. One might be a cough. <coughs> you develop an unpredictable cough. You have disadvantage two on stealth checks. If you saw my video on advantage and disadvantage, disadvantage two is just rolling a d4 and then subtracting that from your stealth check. And that would be your cough problem. So with, with that particular mild corruption, every time you have to do a stealth check, you have to subtract a d4 because you have an unpredictable cough that somehow just comes out when you're trying to do a stealth check. That's part of your corruption. And in my game, there are different things that you can actually do to heal yourself of corruption. You can go to a sanctuary. You can get some healing. Every full moon, you can do a ritual. You can have a healer come in and do a nightly ritual for you all night long to protect you against certain influences from the evil shadow. But incorporating corruption into your games is really, really cool. There are other games that do this, like Conan role-playing game, Middle Earth role-playing game. They incorporate corruption. And it becomes really interesting when you start developing levels of corruption and trying to heal it. So now let's go to roll 20 and I'll show you how this works. Okay, here we are in roll 20. The first one we're going to use is the shadow check over here to the left. Let's bring it up in chat, do a test macro. So what is the DC? Let's say the DC is 15. How many shadow points? Let's say the PCs are going through an area with zombies and ghouls and things like that. Maybe one of those deep areas of the Chult Forest and the Tomb of Annihilation. And they're going through one of the deepest, strongest areas where those beings, those undead live. And they're trying to rest. Well, there's influences in that area around them, through them, in their dream states. And they're taking on influences. Let's say they're going to take three shadow points if they don't survive this particular role. So then we see down there, shadow creeping in. Willpower beats a DC 15, or you take three shadow points. So that's basically it. You get to a rough area, dealing with the shadow, you throw down a DC, beat it, or start to take on shadow points. That's corruption. And you keep track of shadow points in your character sheet. So then eventually, if you get enough shadow points, you get a mild corruption. And that's when you come over here to the mild corruption table. Let's test it out, see what it looks like. Okay, so now here we see the mild corruption madness. 
what happens? The shadow seeps into you. So you're going to be too trusting. You are too willing to accept others at face value. Disadvantage on insight checks. So the cure is during a downtime or full moon. So you have to go into a sanctuary to cure this, this type of corruption. But this gives you an idea of how to use corruption in your game. You develop enough shadow points, you roll on the table. This is one of the things that can happen to you. So now that gets built into your character from then on until they can heal this. Now I'll show you the rollable table where this information comes from. Okay, so here's the rollable table for mild corruption. We're going to see clouded mind, chronic fatigue. You can actually go ahead and pause the video and write these down. But you can always make up some of your own too. Mild bullying. You develop a sense of personal strength and superiority. So you have advantage too on intimidation checks. So sometimes the corruption will actually make you become a bully and you get an advantage on intimidation checks. That can be a good thing. But at the same time, you're still building corruption points. And then eventually, if you keep building corruption points by being a bully, it can come to bite you in the end. So that's kind of the way corruption works is it plays on your emotions, lets you feel more powerful sometimes and then comes in and grabs you and you've been beaten by the shadow because you've fallen into egoism, arrogance, lust, greed, whatever sin there is. I actually have tables for moderate corruption and for extreme corruption, but I haven't had any PCs reach that level yet. But you can see, this gives you an idea of how to use corruption. You do your shadow check, build up shadow points, try to heal them, and if you don't heal them in time, then you go to a corruption table and see what kind of corruption you get. All right, that's a simple mechanic for working in corruption into your games. This is Wisdom Hunter, and remember, whoever has the most fun wins.